this video, I'm going to quickly go over the main parts of the PBR Painter user interface. I'm not going into any depth in this video. I'm just going to go through where things are and go through the basic layout. On the right hand side is the main PBR Painter panel, and this is where you're going to spend most of your time. So this is where the layers are going to be, where you can add and manipulate different layers. And when you have a layer, this is where you're going to change the properties of those layers. So changing channels, importing images, everything like that is going to be in here. So very quickly, this button here is basically the background, and this is basically how you're going to modify the background of your material. And these other buttons here are all used for adding, removing, layers, moving layers, copying layers, importing things, or deleting layers. The rest of the settings down here are the settings for a specific layer, and that's going to change based on whatever is happening in your specific layer. So I'm not going to go into any more depth because that's going to be more obvious as we go through the later videos. The other two things you can view in this panel are the UDIM panel, and I do have another video that explains how to use UDIMs in PBR Painter, so I'm not going to do that here. The main point is for those of you who are familiar with UDIMs, this is where you will deal with them in PBR Painter, and this is how you can integrate that into your workflow. Finally, in this panel, we have a baking tab, and this is basically everything to do with baking, including exporting your materials, creating mesh maps, which is all, again, explained in another video. Okay, so moving on from this panel, down the bottom, if you're using Blender 3 and up, including Blender 4. By default, this is going to show the Asset Browser. And in a later video, we're going to explain how to save all of your cool materials into your assets so that you can reuse them in later projects. And this is where they're going to appear as you create your material library. If you're using an earlier version of Blender where the Asset Browser is not available, this panel down here is going to show the Shader Editor. And this is basically where all your layers are happening. But for most of you, as I said, this is going to be where you're storing your assets. In the bottom left hand corner, we have the standard image editor in Blender. And just above that on the left, we have the brush settings. And this is going to be all the different settings that you're going to access when you're actually doing texture painting. And then the final panel up here is the outliner, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with within Blender. Other than that, there are also different panels that are going to appear in this sidebar or this end panel. So what appears here is going to depend on the context. So if you've got a layer selected, you're going to be able to access the masks for that layer. You can also access material slots. And these are just the different materials that you've got assigned to your model. And finally, again, if you have a layer selected, you can add an ID map to the layer, which once again, I explain in another video. Before I wrap up, one last thing I'll point out is that obviously you can customize this however you want to, so you can move these end panel items around. You can completely redo this workspace if you want. Just remember when you do that to save your default file with your changes. Otherwise, every time you open Blender, you will lose that configuration. Anyway, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna start actually looking at layers and understanding how it all works, where you'll start learning how to create your own PBR painter materials from scratch. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in that next video. Cheers.